Okay, we're back. I got a few things. So I got the new push rod. Got the ratchet gear that has the bearing in there. A ball it keeps the bearing from spinning. I got the bearing out. I also got a new spring here that might be a little bit lighter than this old one here. So we'll see how all this works out here. So a bunch of more new parts. Let's see if they're any good. Uh, these are old ones here from probably 10 years ago at least, these ones, so hope this older stuff's made better than the newer stuff. So there's our ball bearing in there. This is new production, so we don't know how good it's going to be. This one's actually not too bad. It locks up a little bit though right there, which is not good. It was working great and just quit working. You know, this here digs in right here. This retainer piece digs in when it pushes against it. Nice. Sound like a taper wedge effect. Precision adjusting. Yeah, it worked good for a couple turns and it locks up again. Yeah, quality. So we'll have to see how that works. All right, so we get the ball bearing goes in there like that. Yeah, it locks up the bearing. You have to push it up to make it unlock. So we got to keep this from dropping down. As soon as it drops down, it locks up. Works good, and all of a sudden, boom, it just locks up solid. Alright, so what are we going to do to make that work better? First thing I'm going to do is push it down further. Okay, that definitely made it not happy. Thing. It locks up. Hmm. I'm not sure what we're going to do to make that not keep doing that. See how much it locks it up. As long as gravity's going this way, you're fine. It's just when it goes this way, it locks up instantly. Hmm. Can't keep it from doing that. So obviously some kind of a lip up in there that I can't see that's jamming in hard. Hmm. I don't know. Let's play with it a little bit. That's the more I'm doing right now. If there's a problem, you gotta figure out how to fix it. Okay, there's a new spring. I don't know if you can see it. That much tension on it. 
lot more tension. Uh, how much more tension is that? Not a lot, but a little bit. I'd say about 30% more. Yeah, I think that's enough probably to warrant changing it. You see this one fits in there like it's supposed to nice and freely. It doesn't drag on it. it. doesn't lock it up. It just sits in there and seems to have a little less tension on it. Versus this one. Which has a lot more tension. So I'm not going to use this. I'll put a new one in it. I think that'll help it a little bit. It's definitely more freer action here, which is what we want to see. Something that works a little bit better. Okay. Let me rotate this around. Key way over here we need it to be. Those go straight in. Now when you put these in, you got to make sure the bushing will still engage all the way in the ratchet here. If the key keeps the gear from ratcheting together, you got a problem. Okay, where's the key at? This one's going to be pretty tight. Kind of problem we were having before. See now these ratchet teeth are not letting it not letting it engage all the way. See the keys in the way. You can't. The gear is not going to engage, so it doesn't work. So I'm not sure exactly where we're at, but whatever it is, it ain't working. <clears throat> So either way, we're going to go ahead and bounce this on a little deeper. It seems to be engaging better now. Let's go ahead and tighten it up and see what happens. Put out the right socket. Here's engaging all the way. Not sure if it's on there all the way though. Sounds like it's pretty hard. Sounds like it's all the way up. Alright, uh, let's see, where's my This is a lock that holds it in, keeps enough from unscrewing. This has two titties on it, you only need one. So you gotta beat one of them back flat. So now you have one titty lock, see? Problem right now is it doesn't look like it's on there all the way, even though it feels like it is. Take this on and off a couple times and see what happens. <laughs> My lock tab don't want to come off. Let's 
something doesn't feel right, keep working on it. Screaming kids outside now. Looks like I left a little bit of a mark in there where it tightened up against the taper, so I'm assuming it went all the way on. Definitely is tight though. That's tight on that thing. Okay, ratchet's disengaging completely like it's supposed to. See how it goes in and out like it's supposed to. You always want to make sure it engages all the way. Very important. Okay, I'll go ahead and put the clip on there. Lock tab. Turn that on there. Tighten this up. Okay, that's good and tight. It's working freely. Can I get a fold the tab over? Take your chisel. You can do it opposite where this. Bring it up. So you fold it out a little bit like that. Then you take a flat drift punch and beat it flat. Okay, now it's locked on there like it's supposed to be. That still works. Okay, so that part's done. Now I'm going to play with this a little bit and see if I figure out what to make it work easier. So we're back. Okay, got the bearing working. So, looks nice and free now. You can hold it this way, you can hold it this way, hold it this way. Bang it on the table, either direction, which would lock it before, no problem. Basically, I put it in lathe, I put pressure on it, locked up solid, tight as hell, I didn't want to move. I hit with a hammer a few times here on the back side, it freed up, and now it's working. So whatever it was hitting on in there, it buckled enough, it's not jamming into that. It basically was wedging itself in an angle. So now it's nice and free again. So we got that fixed. Hi Fred. What's up, man? So next problem was I didn't really, everything else is screwed up, so I said, ah, the sprocket's got more drag than I really like, so let's find out what the problem is. So you can see a mark going around the circle right in here. And you can see the marks right here where it's hitting right here, and right here along the edge right here on this edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in back and I'm going to chamfer that a little bit and get a little bit of clearance on that. For whatever reason, these are a little tight right here on these edges, so I'll just go ahead with a die grinder and knock it out and see if that takes care of it. So we'll be back. All right, back to work. Everybody's gone now. All right, I got the uh, sprocket clearanced. So I put some uh, 
marking stuff on here. I got a couple of spots where it kisses it. I marked the sprocket. It's not being rubbed on, so it's just kind of bounced against it. So we have clearance now on this. So now I can go ahead and get this back together. Still turns relatively hard, but it's free now, so that's all that really matters. And if we don't have any more problems, we should be able to put together this time. Let's see here. Lock tight. Ooh, that went on easy. Something's starting to go easy again. That'd be nice. Okay, we're double dogged in. Right there. Okay, that's tight. We're back to the same spot on the lock. That's good. That usually doesn't happen. Okay, so that's back on there. So that's everything on there. A little bit easier to turn. It's got a lot of drag from the seal and the grease inside the gear sets. <clears throat> you put it in neutral. It's a little easier, see? So, <clears throat> good enough. Okay, now. You can put the top on or the kicker on. That's the next decision. I'm going to go with the uh, kicker. Okay, here's our new push rod. Let's make sure this fits in the main shaft. Now this is the early push rod, not the late one. So when you use the early throw out bearing, it takes the push rod that has no bearing groove in it or anything. It's just a, a taper. This taper here fits the taper inside of here. So if you don't have this taper on, you get the wrong one. So that goes in there like that. It's supposed to be a nice tight fit. Of course being aftermarket, nothing fits for squat. Typical uh, aftermarket crap. It'll wear itself in. So it looks like they did not put a taper inside of here like they were supposed to. So instead of being on the tapered edge here, it's just on the edge. Yeah, and it's on that little small edge right there, so it'll probably burn itself up and you'll lose about an eighth of an inch adjustment after a few miles. Precision stuff. Okay, now you stick it in here and see how much clearance you got in your bushings. This one here has a bushing on this side here. See how it's relatively tight. Pull out further, you can see the clearance. This side here has no bushing. See how loose it is over here? You can hear it. That's because this is on the other gear and it doesn't, it's being taken up by this. When that goes in there, it takes up the difference. Further down. Okay, now the reason I want the pusher on here because I put the bearing on here like this, <clears throat> then I shove it in. Like that. And you want to make sure it doesn't catch on this drip boiler here. So you got this dripper right here, so you want to make sure that does not catch on the bearing here when it goes in. So you bend it up a little bit. You want it to be close but not hitting, so that doesn't hit on it at all, so that's good. Uh, you don't know when you're ever going to get grease oil in this thing, so put a little lube in it right now. It's not just dry in there. Even though it's not supposed to hit on it, that doesn't mean it won't. Just out of the way. Yeah, I gotta work that channel again. Okay, now when you put this in here, you have to wind this up. 
your crescent wrench, wherever that ran off to. So you take a crescent wrench, you wind it up like this, and you slip it in like this. There it goes. And for some reason, it's not going in. Ugh. Push rods on the floor. Okay, I gotta be able to put some pressure against this to find out what's going on because it's not going in like it's supposed to. So, what are we hitting on here? There we go. I did, I rotated this a little bit so the gear teeth was tooth to tooth instead of where it was supposed to be. Okay, now it's just in there like it's supposed to. The kicker works, especially to get it back in the kind of two gears at once down here. There it goes. Okay. So a test fit there. It all works, and of course we dumped a nice lubricated push rod right in a dirty floor. Need to wipe all that nice grease we just put on off of there. Start over. Lube it again. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try to put this thing together. So we need to get our sealers over here, our gaskets in there. So we got our kicker cover gasket, and we got our top lid gasket. This here we do all the surfaces with the gas sealers. The cover here also. Gasket. Well, if you let the stuff get tacky a little bit, it'll uh, you can stick it to the part and it'll stay attached. If you put it in there wet like I'm going to do, it'll it won't stick real good yet. It takes a, it takes three or four minutes for it to get tacky. So. I don't have time to wait, so I'm going to put it in. Now, the gas can go in two different ways. One side is this fits the case, the other side doesn't have that cutaway up here. So you got to make sure you put it on correctly. So you have to look up in here and figure out which way it is. And you would think the... Well, that silicone can be on the outside, but it's not. It's on the inside. Just the opposite of what you would think it would be. Sure, there's a reason why they did that.
See how the cover has to cut out on the bottom? A little crescent cut there, right here. See that matches the gasket right here. This up here is more straight up here. So even though it's cut away, so I don't know why they put the silicon on the other side. But, uh, that's the way they did it, so oh well. Okay. Now we got to do all this fun part. Just regular nuts here. I got flat washers. I don't use locks on them. Okay, now the bearing we're going to stick on here. You got to make sure the this lever is where it belongs, and the bearing is cut out. You got to make sure that notch right there goes inside where it belongs. And I've had the best luck on doing this with. The bearing on there where you need to have it, and then you slide everything up on there to where it needs to be. Trying to put aside the cover here and slide it on doesn't seem to work that good for me. You got to rotate the round until that's over there uh, in the free spot. This has to work around the back of the bearing. Slide it on in there and hope for the best. If everything is right, it slides right in. Kind of like that. And as soon as you can, get down and get a damn want nut on here to help hold it. Clutch works. Pushing the push rod over here and making sure it works. And I got the wrong push rod, it's too damn wrong. I pulled the one out for a comb motor, not for a 65. Okay, so that all looks to be good. Make sure the kicker works. straight up and down right here and it goes 180 rounds just like you're supposed to it releases on both directions releases right there comes up there and releases kickers releasing it rotates so the kickers releasing all right so that's all good so I go ahead and put the rest of these nuts on You want to put lock washers on here or Loctite on there, you can do that too, whatever you want to do. I've had fairly good luck with just tightening the damn things down.
Okay. That's good. That still works. Two extra washers on the bag here. it out. You can use a ratchet to do it if you want. You go in there and tighten them up with this like this. Or you can use a double box wrench to get torqued that way. I like a double box wrench. And this is going to have to be retorqued after it's run for a while. These are not fitting in there. There it goes. how much torque these studs will take. Kind of work up the level of torque. Starting to get tight now. These aren't super tight, but they're probably 20 foot pounds, maybe a little more. 25 would be nice, but I don't know if we got that much out of it. I feel a lot of squeezing going on and stretching, so that's good enough for me. Okay, so that's all there. Let's double check this again. Once again. So you can watch the gears move here as I kick it. Right. See how the gears move, and then they disengage. See it disengage right there, and then they re-engage when you come back up. Now if you hold the main shaft, it should make the ratchet noise. Okay. You have to hold the main shaft though. And the throttle bearing is still working there. But I got the wrong push rod because I got the one way out here because I grabbed the wrong one. So I have to get the correct one there. So we'll deal with that. And now we're going to do the, get the clutch arm up here. And we're going to put the ratchet lid up on here. Now I got to put this in neutral. And you make sure this is in neutral. So you can tell it's in neutral because it's on that hump, the double cutaway hump right there. That's how you know you're definitely in neutral. All of this should just slip right together with no problem. Of course, everything else in Shirley has been no problem at all, right? So, shouldn't have any problems. Now, if you want to put a little bit of oil in Shirley right here, you can. I don't use it because it just makes a big mess when you're working with it, moving around. So you get a little more careful when you start it up so you make sure the oil's in there when you start it. Now this gas only goes on one way so it's hard to screw it up. It doesn't mean you can't screw it up, but it's just hard. You have to really be a moron. But I've seen that done. Okay. Now, the outside hump right here goes over here where it belongs. Just 
tight hole on that. Okay, that's on there. Okay, I already got grease on my forks there and I got them in neutral position. So this should just slip right on on there with no problem. Like that. If you have a problem, don't keep beating on it because it might have a fork in the way. That means you got to fix the problem. High spot. Okay, let's see what kind of screws we got left here to use. If we're lucky, we got all of them. Okay, so we got two big ones. One chrome and one regular. So we'll put the chrome in where you might see it. You got the breather screw, which is taller and it's got the hole in the side. It's also hollow. That goes right here. This also has a different angle on it. Actually, these ones are early screws. They're all the same angle. This has a higher angle to it than the earlier, the later stuff is. So put the crappy looking ones on the inside where you don't see them. Put the prettier looking ones on the outside where you can see them. At least that's how I usually do it. Just like that. And we're missing one. And there it is. we're looking for. Now I didn't check to make sure the screws fit the cover so I'm going to look at it right now. Right down. I don't know. Looks like it might be off. Okay so I'm going to take a piece of plastic bag and I'm going to stick it in the corner of the screw. I'm going to tighten the screw down. It should touch the bag and not let that come up. See how it's coming up? That's the part I don't like. Yeah, see it's not hitting correctly, so I don't think these are the right screws. I thought they changed in 65, so it appears they might be different. So now I need to pull this lid up. The gasket's are already stuck, I'm sure, so hopefully we don't tear the gasket getting it up again. There, good, it came up. Okay, so now we're going to take our screw, we're going to stick it in the hole and see how it feels. Feels pretty sloppy in the holes. I'm going to go get the later screws and see if there's a difference. So I'll get those and I'll be back. Alright, back on our lid here. Okay, I went and got the screws. So this is our later screw. It has an Allen in the end of it. Now the Harley book says they're all the same from 58, 59 to early 79. Which is not true. You go in the colony book. And they show over here that you got the 55 and earlier, 56 to 64, and then 7, 65 and up. 65, they went to an Allen flathead screw. The earlier ones were an oval head screw, a straight slot. Except for 50 to 53, they had a Phillips head. But the biggest thing is the difference in angle between the cuts under here, the chamfers. Countersink hole, whatever you want to call it, angle. So see how the screws, when you put them together, they're not straight up and down like this. They're different because there's different angles here. So this one's a steeper angle than this one. This one's a flatter angle. 
So this one here looks like an 82 degree, and this one here is probably something in between. It doesn't look like 60, but it might be something similar. It's probably some other angle in the 70s. All right, so what we got to do is figure out what this cover is made for, because we have to match the cover or you break the ears out. You're either going to hit on the inside of the hole, or you're going to hit on the outside and break it out that way. So I'm going to take a marker pen. I'm going to mark the screw here. Mark this one also. And I'll go ahead and mark the lid also. Okay, then you take it. I'll take this one, it's easiest to do. So you let that dry. Forced air cleaning helps. Forced air drying. Okay, you take this, put it in the hole, push it straight in only, rotate it, and pull out. So you look at this one, you see where you're hitting here in the middle of the screw and toward the bottom of the screw. So it's, it's hitting across the face fairly decent, so that's a good sign. And you go look at the hole up in here, and you can see where it's hitting on a fairly wide contact surface there. So that's pretty good. And that's the correct screw for 65s and up. So. so I'm going to remark this again. Dry it again. <sighs> Just because something comes in one way does not mean it's correct. Okay, now we're going to take the other screw. In the hole, take a straight slot. forth a couple times and pull it out. So you see how it's only hitting here on the very bottom of the screw, it's not anywhere near the top. And you can see the same mark in here, it's hitting only in the very bottom, not in the top. So that's why this piece of plastic when I put in there wasn't catching on it because it wasn't, wasn't hitting on the top. Okay, so he has the wrong screws in this bike. <clears throat> so now we got to make a decision what to do on hardware. We have to find a bunch of stock screws that I might have laying around. Maybe. Or we're going to have to come up, we've got to go buy a set of screws for them. I haven't seen in my new box, so. Let's just see what we got. So. Obviously, his screws are wrong. So, this is my miscellaneous junk box. Let's see if I got enough in here to, to do what I need to do. My guess is no. We'll see. Got one for sure. Uh, we got a chrome one. Another unchrome one. Looking good so far. We're out of screws. A couple more chrome ones if we need them. Always hide them a little bit, I guess. Yep, there's another stock one. Good. Now he's trying to make this transmission look like it's not been rebuilt, so if you put a bunch of new hardware in there, it's going to be pretty obvious you got a problem. Okay, so I think we got all the ones we got. I think we have enough there to make the job work. Plus. Now the other thing is I want to make sure that these, these screws here are the correct angle. I can't remember if they change these ones or not. So we'll just go ahead and mark it. Do a little air drawing on this one. And let's see what happens on that one. So these long ones go over here. So I recall these ones stay at the steeper angle. And then I don't remember, because I know they made Allen versions of these. And they 
you have a different one because see there's no angle to it. So we don't have the inner screws we need. So that's going to be a problem. But we do have the outer screws we need. They seem like they fit in the holes pretty good. Check a few of these just to make sure. They seem to be all right. Okay, so we have a pretty good selection of those. Two, four, six, eight, nine. And we got nine here, so we're good. We don't need these ugly crowns. So we got, I'll clean these up and then we'll pick out the ones we're going to use. I'll have to go look through some of my old used training and see if I can come up with the two long ones I need. Because I need two of those, so we'll have to see that. Now the other thing was I had the wrong push rod out here earlier. So I had this one here that's real long here. So this is our 65 and our 64 and earlier. This is our 70 and later, and this is 65 to 69. It's in between. There's about three quarters of an inch difference between the long and short, and the other one's in the middle. So this is the correct 65 version, and it's got the taper in it like it's supposed to. So this is the correct push rod. So that's how you know which one it is if you don't know for sure which one you got. And we'll do a quick little bit of label material over here I gotta clean up. Nothing worse than have a bunch of goo on your push rod. Alright, so I'll get that cleaned off. And I'll go see if I can find some screws. And I also gotta find a drain plug. That's the other thing that's missing. So we'll be back. Alright, I'm back. <coughs> Couldn't find you though. Any of the correct screws I needed, so I'm just going to have to use these. The cover is pretty thick through here, so you're not going to break the cover by using the wrong screw like you will on these corners. But obviously, it's not what I want to do, but I got no choice. I can't find anything else. I did find the correct early cover, though. And here is the early screws he had. Now, you notice how these screws are all the same down. There's the cutter is here. So this screw here will fit right in there with no problem. See how it fits in there, pretty nice and tight, doesn't wobble much, it goes right in like it's supposed to, and it fits nice. So that's what you're looking for, is a fitment like that. Now when you go to this cover over here, this has a lot bigger hole in it. That screw gets kind of lost in it, and that's your first sign there's a problem, plus it wobbles around. When you put the correct screw in there, it fills up the whole hole again, which is the correct way of doing it. So, here's your two covers side by side. And you can see the difference in size between the screws that are in there. So, quite a bit of difference on the, the hole sizes, which you look at. So, that's one way of telling them. But if in doubt, you mark them like I did, and you can identify them. That's why I did it that way. Alright, so, we're going to use the correct cover, which is his. Not my cover. Okay, I'm going to regoop this up so the gas can seal good. And finish this thing off. See, we knew there was going to be something else that's going to be wrong before I got it done. Now, we still don't know if it shifts yet. That'll be the next problem. There's always that last opportunity to fail and not work. And this transmission's been doing it all along, so you pretty well expect there's going to be another problem before we're done. You better or break something. It's always something to look forward to. Okay, there's that. So, this is ready to go back down. Make sure the shift forks are in neutral. Cover's still in neutral. Lid goes right down like it's supposed to. Okay, I cleaned up the screws, so we got a handful to choose from. These two here are going to go in the way they were. Okay, this one's going to go over here where it belongs. And there's two more I left over there I didn't catch. These look good. And these are all the original finish on them, so which means they're rusty and dirty. And nasty looking, which is original. 
try to find the better looking ones to put up in the front. We can see them. We don't have too many of those to choose from. Yep, they got three extras. All right. We're flying along now. I like having little extensions so I get away from the problem areas. I don't like to bang my fingers in the covers and stuff. Get these all started. Let's bring it down to a little bit of a torque, nothing much. Slip around over here to the front, we got no screws in yet. Some kind of an even torque going here and something. I like my little smooth ratchet so I don't hurt myself. Spin around around real easy. So you don't have any, any knurls on there that eat into my hands. My tools are clean so I don't have to worry about being slippery and my fingers falling off. I think that was the excuse for the knurls. When I do have knurls on them I tend to cut them down. Smooth them up a little bit. That one hasn't been cut yet, surprisingly. Right? That means they don't bother me. Okay, so now I got them all in there. Put a little torque on these things. Kind of work from the inside out on my torque pattern. Corners. The straight slot, we use an impact knocker. This one you gotta be real careful on, you don't want to damage it by breaking it. You don't hit it as hard. Now we go back and give our final torque on these screws. And once again, I look at my L and how much it twists when I torque it. So you watch the length of the L in here. See how it twists on you? Pull back a little bit, maybe you'll see a little better, I'm not sure. When you got a decent amount of twist to it, you know it's good. So you know how much you're putting torque in these things. Here we get all those. If in doubt, just hit them again just to make sure they're torqued. Yep, they seem to all be tight. Didn't even round any of them off yet. That's pretty good. All right, so those are all torqued. Oop, wrong direction. Okay. Now, do we shift it or not? Let's find out. One. Third. Fourth. Oh, there's no fifth. Uh-oh, something wrong. There's third. Second. Neutral, low. Didn't pop into low. There it goes. Low, back to neutral. Try low again. There it goes. Second. Right in there. 
back to neutral. Everything works. Yeah, neutral. Make your separate from that one. That all shifts pretty good. Uh, that's good. Must have did something right for once. Okay, now we'll go ahead and put this nut on here. There it goes. Now see when you got when you got the arm on here, it's hard to get the cover on, so you just take it off and it gets out of the way. You have to fight with it. Work on it. Push on your push rod over here. Make sure it all works. It appears to be working correctly. That's always a good sign. Okay, we already had the kicker check before. We can check it one more time just to make sure. It never hurts to double check everything. It spins and ratchets back up. Okay, so the last thing left is our drain plug. Now I found a nice used one that matches up the trainer real good. You can also see that part of it. We did a JB weld right here, which is fills in the back of that stud hole and it blends in pretty good, so it's nice. Put a little silver paint on there, dull aluminum, you can hide it completely. We had to clean the case up over here. It's got some grind marks, but it's already starting to dull out and look more stock. Okay, so here's our drain plug. There's our new hole that we welded up and remachined. Make sure it fits in there. And there must be something wrong, it went right in. That's always a good sign. So these here take a little brass washer. That's how they seal. Goes on like that, and then you tighten it up. Now they got a little shoulder on here, so that keeps it centered over the shoulder here, so it will actually stay put and not go over to one side like a lot of plugs do, which opens up the hole over here to leak. That's why I don't like modern style seals. These old ones work really good. They're actually made correctly. But I do put extra sealer on them though. So we take our three bond out. I don't use silicone, I use three bond. I don't like silicone. It's all right for a stupid car, but not in a Harley. Very few places I would use silicone on a motorcycle. So you go ahead and put a little bit of this right here on the edge. That. Put your brass washer up on there. A little more three bond. And I go put a little bit more on there. Now you could pack the whole thing full right there in that lower o ring area. If you have a problem area, that would be a good spot to put more in there. But if everything's made right, you don't need to do that. Put that in there like that. Make sure the washer stays where it belongs on the shoulder. If it slid over a little bit, push it back in. If, it's, if the washer is correct, it won't slide over. That's why we had the shoulder on it. Okay, now you just take your wrench right there and torque it. And you put pretty good torque on it because it's all new, all new thread with hardened aluminum in there. It's got a hard welding rod in there, so it's hard. Okay, so there's that one all done there. Now for the fifth bolt here, you can either use a bolt or you can put a stud in there, which would be even better, like we do, like these are. Put a stud in here and then you put a nut on top of it. That'd be your best way of doing it. But uh, Harley, they just use a bolt. I always like upgrading and put studs in these. Give you a lot more holding power. And I like using the big flange nuts that they use on soft tails. They have a real large diameter flange nut that goes on here. I like those. So it gives you a really good holding power to your plate. So, so they use those in the 90s soft tails. If you look, go to Harley, you can still buy them. They're expensive nuts, but they're good. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So this now is all pretty well done, I think. So we got that all in there. Clutch still works. Kicker worked, and the shifter worked. So here we go. The speedometer's in there. So that's all like it's supposed to be, also. So that's what it looks like all done. So if you want to make it look like it was never rebuilt, then that we do our best to make him what he wants. So putting those nice used screws in there looks really nice. It, it matches everything else. So it doesn't look like you've redone anything. So 
Uh, the worst thing is you got a chrome cover on here and a stupid black lever, but oh well. Some people like what they like. So other than that, everything else looks pretty good on it. And it all works pretty good now. I took that ugly chrome cover off and a nice stock zinc plated one on there or cab plated one. So it looks a lot better than what he had on there too. He had this stupid thing on there. This definitely looks a lot more presentable like it should. So there you go. That's all done. So hopefully everybody's customer, everybody likes how it went together. Definitely a pain in the butt, but it'll be good. So it shouldn't have any leaks as long as that nut stays tight and everything works like it's supposed to. Should be leak free for at least a couple of years, but who knows? We'll see. Sometimes they uh, have problems, other times they live a lot longer. Now for the oil in this thing, I like running a thicker oil. I use an 85 uh, 140 oil, or I use that Tribodyne 75 140. It's uh, real good stuff, nice, good protection. They're also coming out with a heavy duty one. It's uh, almost a straight 140, which would be even better for these things. But I've yet to got that. That's something brand new they're coming out with, so we'll see. But uh, otherwise, use a thick oil. Do not use motor oil in there. Motor oil is not made for transmission gears. It actually destroys the oil of the gears. It's made for your motor. It's not made for your transmission. So don't use motor oil in there. Use a gear oil. Gear oils are made for doing gears. This is a gearbox. Use gear oil. Real simple. So anyway, there you go. That's what it looks like. So we're uh, done with this one.